Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you with this, this word, this commandment in our hearts. Help us to, to find meaning for right now for our lives, even though we're at just different places in our lives. Help us to find meaning here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, one night, about three or four months, I think it was, before I went off to summer camp, I was age 10, my parents, we had just agreed that I was going to go to sleepaway camp for the first time up in far away Wisconsin. And I remember one night, I don't know if it was that same night, but it might have been, I was worried, I was scared to be first time away from home and first time flying on a plane without my mom and dad, I cried myself to sleep. Fast forward about three months, maybe, and I'm up at camp, and everything went fine. I'm there, and I make it, <clears throat> and what I remember about that first day, or really the first night, was in our cabin again crying myself to sleep. About three, maybe three and a half weeks later, I also remember my camp, the counselor in our cabin saying to me, really what he was doing, he was threatening me, that if I didn't finally write a letter to my parents, I was not going to be allowed to have dinner quickly they forget. Many years later, the night before going to college, you'll be glad to hear I did not cry myself to sleep. But you know what? I actually kind of felt like it. And yet, I get to college my freshman year, and truthfully throughout my freshman year, and really all of my years in college, and really even all of my years as an adult. I didn't call home that much. Well, let's fast forward again to right now. I can't tell you how much I miss my parents and how much I wish I could call them and share some story with them or get some great sage advice. I miss them. So here we are. We're right between Mother's Day and Father's Day. And we have this commandment, the fifth commandment, to honor thy father and thy mother. And like a lot of us, I can't say this for sure, but I'm pretty sure plenty of us have a mixed record with this commandment. The first four commandments, which we've been doing, they were about, on, about, about our connection, our relationship with God. But now this fifth commandment begins the last six commandments, which are about our relationship with each other. And it makes sense that the commandments, this pivot, would start with the commandment to honor our fathers and mothers because it's the most, most important, the most foundational relationship of our lives, and it affects every other relationship we have in life. And so however you feel about your relationship with your parents, this is important. It's important to God, and God wants it to be important to us. Have you ever been angry at your parents? I think I know the answer to that question. Of course! And by the way, th our parents at us as well. 
sadly, the question for some folks can actually be, was there ever a time where you were not angry at your parents? At the outset here, it's important to notice that in this commandment, this fifth commandment, it's actually not a commandment to love our parents, it's a commandment to honor our parents. And I think that tells us something about God and God's understanding of who we are and how off the rails relationships, even with parents, can go. And sometimes beyond repair, maybe. And so we need to ask, why God is so insistent that we honor our parents when parent-child relationships, and I consider myself still a child, parent-child relationships can be so fraught. Let's start by looking at ancient Israel. To say that the family unit was an important part of, of the culture is a massive understatement. This book I have back from seminary called Biblical Social Values, an outstanding book. It says, it says that family-centeredness, that the family unit was the main pillar of Israelite society. society. For example, we know that in modern times, we parents, we hope that our kids will do better than we do. But in biblical times, in ancient Israel, the thinking was that children should aspire to stay within the family nest and to have the same social standing, to keep the family in the same solid place that it had always been. Family, in that culture, was the main carrier of traditions in a culture where tradition was just about everything passing it along from one generation to the other, to neglect family bonds would be seen as a grave risk, not only to family and the family unit, and not only to the passing along of faith, but really to the society itself and its longevity, which is what that commandment is getting at, that you will live long in the land. Which in some ways this makes, when, you, when we put it in this perspective, it makes Christianity, early Christianity, even more controversial in its earliest days. And that's because, in part, because Jesus, the things, his, his attitude, the things he said about family were actually pretty complicated. Now, our reading from Mark, in, in it, Jesus emphasizes the fifth commandment, the need to support parents, and criticizes the Pharisees for looking for ways around that. But similarly, at the very end of, and I should say similarly, at the very end of his life, Jesus is up on the cross, and he looks down from the cross, and he sees his mother and another disciple, and he says to the disciple, please take care of my mother. But at other times, and it's multiple times in Scripture, Jesus sounds actually, truthfully, sounds a little bit dismissive towards family. When he says things like, it's those who do the will of God. They're the ones who are my family. And he says other things. So where does that leave us today? How, do we, how are we supposed to think about the commandment this commandment in a time when the family unit and family relationships are more fraught than ever and more fragile than ever. In a time where, maybe this is a relic from the 60s, in a time where we used to call our parents, you know, that's my old, that's my old man or that's my old lady, although I've been told that that's not the case anymore. Or sometimes for us boomers, oh, boomer parents, baby boomer parents, we're told sarcastically when we say something that doesn't quite resonate, okay, boomer. In honoring our parents today, are we swimming against the tide of modernity? Is this less important today? Of course not. In some ways, I think it's pretty obvious 
about this need to value our parents, even though it does, of course, sound a little bit old-fashioned. Because among other things, again, of course, the family unit is a vital carrier of culture and of tradition and values and of faith. And also, it's a reminder, and it's also sort of an incubator of how we will deal with authority, which is really important in this time when our institutions are held in much less respect than they used to be. And likewise, it's also noteworthy that, that even in these fractured times, American society implicitly acknowledges the importance of the fifth commandment in our celebrations of both Mother's Day and Father's Day. But what about the rest of the year? The commandment doesn't say honor thy mother and father only on Mother's Day and Father's Day. What does it mean to honor our parents on an ongoing basis? Maybe we can get some help by looking at the word that is translated as honor, honor thy parents, the, the Hebrew word, which is chabed a word that implies weight, actually heaviness, or gravitas might be another word that, that comes to mind. And so maybe one way to see this is that it could be that we're supposed to take our parents seriously, which could mean taking their opinions on board, whether we agree or not, and being open to their perspective which in reality, this could mean differing things to each of us because our relationships tend to be so different. But at a minimum, it means not writing off our parents and not being dismissive. One person I talked to this week, and I talked to a lot of people this week. This one, I needed to hear from a lot of people on this one. One piece of person used the words, two words, Respect and compassion. Respect for our parents, for what they've been through in raising us. Regardless of whether they think they did a fantastic job or not. What they put into it. But also compassion for the relationships that they had with their own parents that shaped them. Which can lead us to better understanding of our parents, and if needed, can also lead us to forgiveness. But far be it from me to lecture people who are estranged from their parents. This week I spoke to a friend who is in that situation of estrangement. And he actually said to me that he would never talk to his mother again and gave a variety of very understandable reasons. And when I pointed out that our angers and maybe even hatreds can be self-consuming, he told me that he worried that any interaction would seriously jeopardize the foundations and the relationships of his current life. This is tricky, complex stuff because we're all in different situations. This can be loaded, a loaded topic, this fifth commandment. Having said all of that, I heard a great quote years ago that has stuck with me that I think is helpful. It goes like this. We reach maturity when we stop blaming our parents for our problems and embrace our problems as our own. Implicit in this is both an ability to let go, but also to take responsibility, which can, and I know this from personal experience, because in the Bunnis family it wasn't perfect. This can make a gigantic difference, freeing us 
from long-nursed angers, while also at the same time opening our eyes to the positives, giving us better vision and understanding and of, of, of positives that might have been obscured and in that way can lead us to gratitude and to appreciation. This really is a complicated topic, and it's bound in some ways to ruffle. What I say here is bound to have ruffled someone's feathers. Every conversation I had this week gave me new insights, new ideas, led me potentially to say this or to say that. And so many things that I've not raised today, like the simple one that when we treat our parents well, our kids are more likely to follow suit when it comes to us. But other things, so many things could be raised here. But instead of going on and on, and I could, I'd like to close with two thoughts, two additional thoughts, very simple thoughts, basic. First, and as an a friend, another friend said to me this week, maybe we can learn to trust that God knows what God is doing. To trust that God gave us this fifth commandment for our own good, but also for everybody's good. And in closing, one final thought. Several years ago, I went with a couple folks from the church. I went to another church here in Miami to hear a sermon, to hear a preacher. And um, I was curious about the church. And the preacher that day, a young guy, he did a sermon on the fifth commandment. And he did a good job, I thought. He talked about about. Um, importance of it, but also the complications of it. But there's one part of his sermon that stands out to me that I remember very clearly. It's the way he ended his sermon. His parents were sitting in the front row, which no one knew. And he invited them to stand up and introduce them great applause and thank them. I can't tell you how much I wish I could do that right now. Friends, the commandment is to honor our fathers and our mothers. But it is also, there just has to be, there can't not be some love in this as well. Because the love is throughout.